Right, so we're now going to build in the functionality to allow the user to change their password. So there's a few things that we need to do here. We obviously need to create the routes to be able to show the form, then allow the user to enter them and submit it through to another route. So post it through to a route. Uh, we obviously need our views, which uh, include our form. And we also need to update our validation because we need to validate or add a validation rule to check if the user's password that they supply is the same as the current password they have. And uh, this is mainly for security reasons. So if anyone uh, comes to a computer and sees you logged in, they can change uh, your own passwords. They need to know your password before they can change it. So let's start off then uh, with just the usual stuff. Uh, we're already logged in as a user here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a link to our menu to be able to change our password. We'll create both our, our routes and we'll take it from there. So let's open up our navigator. So we'll close all of this stuff off. Let's open up our or navigation view. And if the user is authenticated, we want to create a new link here. So we create a link, put a hash in there for now, call this change password. And let's go and create these routes. So under roots, under auth, we want to create a new folder called password. And under here, we're going to have a root called change.php. So this is where the user is going to land to change their password. So we'll deal with the page with the form first of all, and then we'll look at posting it. So we have app get and the route we are going to choose is just change password you can obviously call this whatever you want and we're going to use app okay so to render the view we just want to say app render auth password change.php let's create that view now so under views and auth we'll create a new folder for our password stuff remember this is going to include resetting uh, the password and forgotten passwords as well so we will change.php so change password and we've got all this hooked up now we just need to add it to our main roots file so let's just add this here like so and then in our navigation we will update our URL for we obviously need to give this root a name so let's say auth.password.change and under our navigation now we can say URL for auth.password.change. We can obviously prefix these with auth if we want, or we could just get rid of this altogether. Uh, it's nice to keep them under one kind of namespace type thing, but we'll just keep consistency for now, and uh, you can change this around to what you want. So now that we've got that, then we have change password. We can click that and we see change password. Uh, so let's build out our form. Under the change password view, uh, we need to pull in our kind of uh, base that we use. So we can, again, steal that from home. Let's paste that in there. So change password. And in here, change password. Uh, we've forgotten one thing. At the moment, you don't need to be authenticated to change your password because what we're not doing is taking advantage of the authenticated filter that we created earlier in the series. So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say we want the user to be authenticated before they change their password. And that's gonna be the same for the post route as well. So inside of our view, we'll create a form. This is gonna go through to password.change.post. So we'll just quickly define this out here. So app post change password this also needs to be an authenticated route we have our callback there and we use app so I'll just echo posted and we're going to set the method to post obviously I'm going to turn autocomplete off so inside of our form, what do we need? Well, we need to take the user's old password, we need to take a new password, and we need to take a password confirmation. So we'll be checking the old password against the password they currently have. We'll be taking the password and the password confirm and comparing them, 
and we'll do all this through the validation class. So the first field then is going to be for the old password. So we'll create a label here for password old. We'll say old password. And we'll create an input type of P here. So a, a, a type of password so no one can see this. We'll give it the name password old. That's the name we pick up within uh, PHP. And then we'll give this an ID. So that's hooked up to the label like so. And again, we'll copy and paste this just to save a bit of time. The next field is the new password. So we just get rid of password old like that. And then we want a repeat or a confirmation of that password. So we say password underscore confirm, password underscore confirm and the same here. And then we here we say confirm new password. And then last but not least, we have our submit button, which is going to be called change. Now, remember, all of our forms that we post are cross-site request forgery protected now. So if I was to change my password, uh, we don't have a password change post root name. So let's just add this on. Password.change.post. So let's go back and submit that um, here. So cross-site request forgery token mismatch. So again, we're forced to uh, implement a change here. So we're going to put an input type of hidden. We're going to pull through for the name our cross-site request forgery key, which remember is in all of our views now. And the value is the cross-site request forgery token. So that's fixed that. We can now submit it and do whatever we need to change the user's password. So we can type in our old password, new, and we can confirm our new password now. How do we process this? Well, we're going to do the same as we've always done. We're going to grab our request object, so app request, and we're now going to pull in the old password, the new password, and the confirmation. So password old, that is app request post password old. We have the same for our new password, which is just called password, and we have our password confirm, which is our password confirm like that. So we need to validate this. So we're going to be adding another custom validation method in our validation class, much like we did when we were checking if the user had a unique email or username. So again, we say V equals app validation. That's our validation class. And we start to validate this data. So we need to validate the old password and that's password old. Now the rules for this are that it's required. All of these fields are required. And the other rule is that it matches the current password. That's the only other rule. We can't implement that yet because we haven't created the method, but we'll do that in a moment. So the next is for the password. This is password variable. It's required and we can also define the same rule as we did when we registered. So we want this to be a minimum of six characters. So the password conf confirmation or password underscore confirm has the rules required and it must match the password here that we've passed in. Okay, so if this validation passes, what we want to do is update the user's password by hashing the new password they've given. We want to save that, and then we want to send them an email to say that their password has changed. We want to flash a global message to tell them that their password has changed and redirect them to the home page. Otherwise, we want to show the form with any errors. So if V passes, this is where we're going to update the uh, user's password. Otherwise, what we want to do is we want to show the page with errors. So we just say app render. We render the same template, which is auth password change.php. And we send through here the errors. We don't need to send through the request like we've done in previous parts because uh, we're not actually going to be showing any of the 
form data that's been entered. We're not going to pre-fill them fields if they've not been entered properly just for security reasons. So let's check and see how this works. So I'm going to click change. Now we have errors because we haven't entered any of these and they are all required. Uh, so we now need to actually update our form to display them errors. So under each of these, we can do the usual check that we do to output errors. We can say if errors has password old and end if there. I think previously we've not used has. So for example, in our login form, we've used if errors first. So we can go and just update them like so for the registration as well. So we have a has method which checks if any errors exist on this. Either one will work fine. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, but what we can do is just keep consistency here. And then this should be left at first because that will just show the first error. So if errors has password old, we want to output that error. So here we just say errors.first password old. So we can submit the form through again and we see password old is required. So we can copy this, paste this down here and do the same for just the new password. And we can paste this in for the password confirmation as well. So password underscore confirm and password underscore confirm. And there we go. That's our validation done to a certain extent. So let's actually uh, update the user's password and then we'll tackle adding that validation rule in to actually check the previous password, which is really important. Otherwise, we wouldn't bother having the field there. So to update a user's password, what we want to do is say user password equals app hash. We're going to hash a password and this password is going to be the password that they provided. So the new password, remember we have that in a variable called password. And then we're going to say user save. Now there's another way to do this. We can do user update and then we can pass through password as this here. So either way you want to do it, uh, I personally prefer update, but it doesn't really matter which way you do it. Then we want to send an email. We'll tackle that in just a minute. But before that, we're going to flash a message to tell the user their password's been updated. So I'm going to flash global. You changed your password. And then we're going to redirect. So app response, redirect, and we're redirecting to the URL for the home page. So again, we're just doing the same thing. Um, we're just flashing this. But the reason we're going to send an email is it's a security consideration. If someone does have their account compromised and their password is changed, it's good to just send them an email just to tell them that their password has been updated so they know. So when I hit change now, we obviously get all these validation errors. Let me enter just password here and then I'll enter a new password. We'll go ahead and click change and we've got undefined variable user in change. So let's just uh, have a look here. Um, okay, so when we say user update, obviously this is app auth update. It's not user. We don't have a user variable there. So let's just resubmit that form. And there we go. You changed your password. So now if we just go back to our database table, this value would have changed. So what you could do is bring it up and just check that the hash has changed. But if I go and, uh, well, let's do it again, I suppose. Let's make another update. And click change. And there we go. When I refresh now, you see that that hash has changed. And we can log out and log in with our new password. So now let's tackle the uh, problem of checking the old password. So we need to create a new validation rule here. And this is going to be something like matches current password, like so. So we need to update our validation class to be able to check that the password that's been sent into the validator matches the user's password that they currently have. So how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, what we need is we need to be able to get access to our hash class from this validator. 
So we need another dependency injected in here. So that's hash, hash. And we also need auth, which remember can be null. So we're going to set it by null to default there. So let's add these as properties up here. So hash and auth. So remember user just uh, represents the user object, which can be any user. This isn't necessarily the current user. Hash, we know what it does. It hashes and checks passwords and the other things. And auth is the currently logged in user. So let's set these down here. And we obviously need to pass these two in because they're currently not being passed in at the moment. So if we open up our start.php file and come to the point where we are defining our validator here, we can pass in app hash and app auth, and that's it. So now we obviously don't have a rule. Um, the reason we're getting this error though is because what we're doing is uh, it's expecting an instance of cocos validation hash, which isn't right. Um, so what we need to do is just use the namespacing in validator for hash. So up here, let's say use cocos helpers hash, and we should be all good to go. So now when we refresh, we see class violin rules matches current password rule not found. That's basically because we haven't implemented a custom rule for checking uh, a user's password. So this matches current password rule. So let's implement this now. So we're going to say public function validate underscore and then matches current password, the same as we gave. And we need to pass in the value that's given in that form, any previous input and any arguments, which we're not going to be using. And let's just return false here for now, just so we can uh, test this out. So what we now want to do is add a rule message. So we're going to say this add rule messages. And we're going to add a rule message for matches current password. And here we're going to say that does not match your current password. Simple as that. So because we're returning false from this, we'll always get this error if we just fill this in like rubbish. That does not match your current password. Password must be a minimum of six and password confirmed must match password. So everything looks like it's working. We just need to work out how we check the uh, user's current password matches. And this is really straightforward. All we need to do is an if statement within this rule to say if this auth, so basically is the user signed in and is this hash check password. Remember we have that check password method on our helpers hash class. So check password or password check. That just verifies a password. And what we can do here is we can pass in the value given from the validator. And then we can pass in the user's password, this auth password. So that's the password hash. And that's the password that's given by the user in that validation. So if that is the case, it means that the password does match. We can return true. Otherwise, we can return false. So there are other ways of structuring this, but I'll leave it as this just so it looks a little bit simpler. OK, so now my current password is just password, just the string password. So I'm going to type in my old password as something else. And I'm going to type in just password as my new password. So I'm going to keep it the same. I'm going to hit change and we have hash check password. So let's have a look at this. So that's password check as we already saw. So let's try this again. So I'll type in a random old password and I'll type in a sensible new password and click change. That does not match your current password. So as I mentioned, my current password is password. So I'm going to type that in. I'm going to type in a new password. And there we go. My password has been changed and we can check that in the database. We see the hash change like that. So we've not only updated the user's password, we've checked the old password matches. But now let's quickly send an email to the user when they do update their password, just so they know. I'm going to send an email just here. So as we know, we have our custom wrapper for being able to send email. So all we need to do is say app mail send. 
and we can say email auth password change.php as the view. We're not going to send any data along with this request. We have our callback here with our message argument in. The message is going to be sent to app auth email. In fact, what we can do is we can say user equals app auth, and then we can just switch this out for user. It just looks a little bit more readable. So user email. And here we need to use user for it to be available in this scope here. And we're going to say message subject you changed your password. So we need to create this view now because we haven't created it already. So let's go under views, email, auth, create a new folder, password, and then create a new file called changed.php. And let's just update this to changed. And inside of here, we're going to do exactly the same as we've done for any other email. So we're going to copy and paste the contents from the registered email paste it in there and in here we can just say you changed your password and you can just warn the user that if they didn't they can contact you or whatever you want to do in here so we now have uh, our email set up to alert the user that the password has been changed we're actually changing the password so let's give it a go let's type in my old password let's type in a new password and hit change that will go ahead and change my password as we've seen and it should send us an email to tell us that we changed our password. So there we go, that's how we update a user's password within our authentication system.